So this is SAP GTS. SAP GTS is a standalone system, right? Standalone system means it is a it will be available in the separate box. It is not part of our SAP ECC. Oh, SAP it, GTS is a standalone system. Okay. It is a standalone system. Even it is not part of our S4. Okay. It will be a standalone system. Number one. Number two is in SAP GTS, like other, you know, other system, we can't create any data directly for official purpose. I can say for official purpose, we cannot create any kind of data. So if you can't create any kind of data, then how can we use SAP GTS, right? So here in SAP GTS, we just, we are just processing our data. Even though to process our data, we need the informations. Now, which kind of data we are processing? So, in fact, SAP GTS mainly SAP GTS is nothing but global trade services, right? So, it means it is a service for global trade. What is global trade? Export and import. When goods are going out to any country or when goods are coming in from any other country. So, when goods are going out, which is nothing but sales process. Profit. But same sales, if you are selling to some uh, other country, if there is a cross border movement, same sales process is called as an export process. So if we are creating a sales process, what kind of transactions we are creating? So whenever customer places an order, we need to create a sales order. Now, with reference to the sales order, we need to create an outbound delivery. And then finally, after PGI, we need to perform uh, billing document. These are the three transactions which we need to create as part of sales. <clears throat> so whenever we want to process our this logistic data, sales logistics data, we need to, we are going to process the sales related information in SAP GTS system. Number two point. Number three point is so this is all about sales. Coming to purchase process. Purchasing process. If we are purchasing something from a country which is located in, I mean, if it is located in, uh, uh, I mean, vendor is located to any other country, still it is in purchasing process. But more spe specifically, it is nothing but import process. Import process. Now, when we're purchasing or import process comes into picture, then let's say if we want to purchase something, so we are creating a purchase order in our SAP system with with so and so specific vendor, right? So we are creating purchase order, and then we need to create an inbound delivery for this purchase order. And finally, when we receive the goods physically, we need to post G, uh, we need to uh, post MyGo, that is GIA, which is nothing but material document, right? Whenever we save MyGo, it will create one material document. So these are the three transactions from the import process. So this is our logistics data because goods are moving here. So it is our logistics data. So we are just processing these logistics data in SAP GTS system. But question here is, if we need to process these data, how can we process, right? Because we can't create sales order, delivery, billing. We can't create PO, IBD, material document. So how can we process data in GTS? So that is the reason we need to transfer these data from different system to SAP GTS system. So if we are transferring, so from the logistics data point of view, either we are using ECC or today we use S4, right? Because we create these logistics data in into these two systems only. So if you are creating sales document here, delivery document here, billing document here, or if we create PO, IBD, material document here, we need to transfer these data to SAP GTS system. But even before transferring these data, we have one more doubt. And doubt here is, let's say, talk about sales order. 
in sales document we have header data and item data forget about schedule and data so we have header data and item data header data which is specific to all the uh, document the item data which is specific to number of line item so if when we are transferring same structure is there in case of obd in case of billing in case of PO, IBD, material document, when we are transferring these data to CP GTS system, so what GTS system does, GTS system also create one replica of these documents. So when sales order gets transferred to GTS, we will have GTS system will create one mirror document to this GT, to this sales order. When we are getting purchase order, GTS system will create upon transferring the data, it will create one mirror document into GTS so in those mirror document also similar to our sales document or purchasing document we will have header data and item data header data at least at high level we can say partners item data we can say material so what does it mean it means we will have custom we will have replica document created in gts only if we will have business partner and material document in gts sorry material in gts so what does it mean? It means even before transferring these transactional data, first we need to have material and customer in SAP GTS from the sales data point of view. And from the purchasing data point of view, we need to have vendor and material in SAP GTS system. So before transferring these transactional data, we must transfer master data. Now, which master data we are transferring? In general, we need to transfer customer master data. We need to transfer material master data. We need to transfer vendor master data. So these are the three master data which is required for our uh, mirror documents in SAP GTS system. So whether it is master data, or it is a transactional data. We must transfer this information from our, G, from our other system to GTS system. So any system which transfer data to SAP GTS, like ECC is transferring data to SAP GTS is called as a feeder. Even if you're transferring the data from S4 to GTS, S4 data, S4 system is called as a feeder system for SAP GTS. It means SAP GTS doesn't know whether it is ECC or S4 or even non-SAP system or even DM system or EWM system or any system. System GTS system doesn't know. GTS system just knows that this is my feeder system that's all so any system from where we are sending data to sap gts is called as a feeder system please make a note of this and next important point is so one thing we understood we are transferring data from different feeder system to sap gts system so how we are sending data because these are all these all are standalone system ecc is in one box gts is another box even s4 is also in another box now, uh, in real time, I have a yeah, one, yeah, one minute. So in real time, probably in in few client we will have only EC system. In some client we can have only S4 system. Even now we can observe big giant, big client will uh, are using even ECC, even and GT and S4 both. So in that case, for SAP GTS, we have ECC and S4 both as a feeder system. From where we are sending data to SAP GTS system. Yes, Mr. Ravi. Yeah, now I have a question. So what is the necessity for GTS system to be a standalone system? Why it is not connected to an ECC or because before GTS, there was a foreign trade management, right? Yes. Okay, and now uh, foreign trade management after that GTS came up into a system which is dealing with export management. So mm -hmm. now why it is supposed to be a standalone <clears throat> system? Why it is not added to ECC? Even if we open um, ECC system, 
if mm -hmm. you open EC system, you can see GTA system. GTA yeah. system is part of ECC as well. Okay. But problem is this one. We always need to send data from different system. I mean, from different process to GT system. Even though, let's say, if it is if it if it is part of ECC. So even though we can establish GTA system uh, as a uh, as a separate client, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, most right? of the but, uh, company. Yeah. yeah. In that case, it can work. Still, still, in many cases, we will have technical issue. We will have technical issue that we will we won't be able to transfer so many information from ECC to GTS. Or let's say there is no technical issue. But what e ECC? I mean, GTS is is part of ECC. But let's say tomorrow client is planning. Client is also using CRM system, mm -hmm. and they want to integrate CRM also to GTS system. Now what will happen if uh, ECC GTS will be part of ECC? How can we transfer data from CRM to GTS? Okay, one or, more question. Okay. Or, so you are saying that uh, you said GTS. Let me oh, finish it. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Or even if tomorrow we need to transfer data from TM to GTS system, it is not possible in this case. If it is part of ECC, we can we will have, but unnecessary. We we need to have so many technical parts, so many technical things we need to do. So even sap also recommends that even though sap we can install sap gts in the same netweaver system but because of this technical thing sap always recommends to keep sap gts in a separate box in separate netweaver system yes please your question okay. now my question so so uh, now you are saying that sap gts is a standalone system to avoid all technical issues, better to have a SAP GTS as a standalone system and yeah. it will integrate with ECC or TM or S4 HANA or even CRM or any of SAP system. Okay, correct. Okay, correct. is there any possibility for SAP GTS system to integrate with another ERP system? And the ERP means? Uh, say, for example, uh, Oracle, Oracle Finance. So, yes, Oracle is. It is possible. Ah, that's what I was. So that is that is also one of the reason SAP GTS is supposed to be a standalone system like SAP RIR. SAP RIR is supposed to be a standalone system, so it will integrate ah, with SAP and non-SAP system. Similarly, SAP yes. GTS system will also integrate with the SAP and non-SAP system. Is it correct? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Now I take a point. So that's the one point. Second point. Now in ECC, if you look at it, you are exactly correct. There is a uh, global trade system I have seen. Hmm. Do you want me to configure anything on GTS system in the ERP? Because see, any company they have a ECC and also a GTS system. Yes. And is there any requirement to do any configuration in uh, GTS in the SAP in in ECC? No, 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 no. So that is why, even though we have these parts available, but we don't use that. As you also so mentioned, you, always so we not touch that. We need not touch it. We don't touch it all. Yeah. Okay. That's what we I don't. Okay. Okay. Now another question. If suppose you hmm. don't have any SAP GTS system, but only you are using ECC system, in the ECC system hmm. itself there is a GTS uh, uh, functionalities are available. Can we make use hmm. of that as much as possible? Is there any possibility? Possibility means yes, we can. Still we can use. But sometimes we will have some technical issue. Even we can't know where we can have technical issue. I understood your question that let's say it is the same box. We, we are not going to use any non-SAP or any any other SAP system. And we, we won't be planning to connect. Still we can go with different client number. But still, you know, because sometimes we don't know which kind of technical issue can can uh, can arise. So always we keep GTS as a standalone system. Always. Anyway, if we are using SAP GTS, uh, uh, I heard that still we need a separate license, even though it is part of our uh, this this system. Mm. Uh, they, and there could be one, one more problem. There could mm. be one more problem. I think that you know you we need to connect our SAP GTS with the custom system via that also we connected via one middleware that is Seaburger. So probably there could in what is the system? Seaburger, Seaburger, Seaburger. Eh? Yes, Seaburger. That is the custom <laughs> system. 
uh, see burger is not custom system it is a third party tool which can be used as a uh, we can say uh, converter between sap gts and custom system custom means it's a customs office in india customs office system let's say aes that is us yeah. custom system yeah right. aes is a us custom system in india it is supposed yeah. to be what c burger system uh, no, no, no not in india i mean c burger so let's say what is the purpose of c burger this is sap gts system and okay. and because of that reason we go with sap gts that okay. sap gts system is having capabilities to send the declaration to the customs authorities directly we don't need any brokers we don't need any freight forwarders why because we can do declaration in in two ways one is paper paper uh, declaration second mm -hmm. i mean one can be paper based declaration and there can be e filing today the problem is that most of the custom systems started accepting document electronically so let's yeah, say in our right, right. Term, I doc. right so mm -hmm. take example of aes only AES accept document electronically only. So if we not SAP GTS, so whatever system we are using, the system should have capabilities to send that declaration, let's say, electronically to the AES system. So then the AES system will send to US uh, custom department. Is it so? Exactly. Exactly. So, so what happens? It's supposed to be a middleware system. It's a kind of not not middleware so gts from gts system let's say we are sending declaration export declaration okay, okay. gts system understand one language mm -hmm. AS system understand another language so okay. how can these two systems communicate with each other that is where c burger comes into picture oh. so what happens from sap gts we are sending declaration in the form of outbound idoc that outbound IDOC will be triggered into this C burger system. Oh, so from write C down C burger burger. also. Can, can you huh? just, uh, write down C burger? So, so here in in real time, whenever we are going to uh, you know establish this connection, we will also have C burger consultant from C burger mm -hmm. team. So mm -hmm. they will they will be responsible to connect C burger with AES. How to set up this communication? And so it works like a genron. It works like a genron yes we can say we can say so this is kind of middleware so that will message will transfer from gts to c burger in the form of outbound idoc and then mm -hmm. c burger will convert that outbound idoc into the readable format of aes then from here message will be triggered to aes this mm -hmm. is outbound now this happens in with uh, you, uh, you know in couple of seconds or, okay. uh, or hardly a minute immediately so immediately from gts we can send a declaration to custom system within a couple of second or minute mm -hmm. and now we also we can we need you know approval we need some kind of a response so if custom so in custom system will also validate all our information everything let's say yeah. who is our ship to party do we have other required documents or not everything it will validate and if they find any kind of discrepancy they will re reject that declaration so once they will reject it I, so message will be triggered from AES to c burger and c burger will again convert that uh, inbound in, in incoming message into the inbound idoc so in sap gts we will receive this as an inbound idoc or so they have accepted again it will go trigger to c burger c burger will convert that message into an inbound idoc which we will be receiving in the form of inbound idoc Okay. okay so this whole process you know like outbound from gts and inbound to gts it will be done uh, within a second so aes is the one which will give an approval immediately that's what you are saying exactly exactly mm -hmm. because a system uh, uh, accept a document electronically let's say we are not using sap gts it doesn't mean all the clients or, or each and every companies are using uh, you know gts only we all know but even though if you don't use sap gts that is where we can't use e-filing it is called as a e-filing which is also called as a self-filing mm -hmm. self-filing Bo both terms are same so if we are not using sap gts let's say then we can't go with e-filing or self-filing rather than these two we need to go with the broker filing mm -hmm. i mean we're talking about the custom declaration form custom declaration part because in compliance management, 
compliance management is just for the internal purpose internal purpose just to make just to make sure we are compliant but we we don't send anything to anyone any authorities nothing after clear after getting clearance from the compliance management only we move the shipment from our premise so yeah. that is where billing document comes into picture and it is the billing document which creates an export declaration in sap dts or it is material document which creates an import declaration in sap dts so then so, this come. okay so generally just a little bit more clear so export uh, customer custom declarations will be created exactly at what in which in between which processes so Maybe after delivery or after billing please remember one thing not after delivery i mean not after delivery or billing export declaration can be created only with the help of billing document ah uh, okay okay okay, okay. okay. So, but, so, so, so this billing document it can be actual invoice even it can be an a pro forma invoice doesn't matter if it is a pro forma invoice yes mm -hmm. definitely before pgi in most of the cases you will see this case this will be very rare case where we are using actual invoice but yes i have seen i have seen that we still use actual invoice for the declaration purpose but most of the client go with pro forma invoice so the for, the process would be sales document which will be create which will trigger to gts system for compliance screening outbound delivery which will also be triggered to uh, uh, gts system for compliance screening and then after delivery creation immediately will create pro forma invoice for the declaration purpose because we need to make sure sales order and delivery should be clear probably you you will have question when our sales order is clear why we need to send delivery as well probably some of you know if don't know we'll discuss that that, that point but once delivery is confirmed then only we can move our shipment but before moving our shipment immediate we complete pro forma invoice so that at least we can get all the clearance from the customs authorities mm -hmm. and then we will do pgi and once we okay. do pgi anyway it will take some time for our shipment to to arrive to the port right even though mm -hmm. if our uh, if our office is very near to uh, port let's say still it will it needs some time at least one day or two day correct yeah correct, so correct, correct, correct. we we send pro for pharma to gts it will create one export declaration immediately automatically export declaration will be created automatically and then we do pgi so that goods can be moved from our location to port and in between if we got clearance from the customs authorities well and good immediately shipment will arrive to the port we can complete all the formalities and as per the schedule we can our shipment can be loaded on the vessel very good sir i think this whole process we should understand step by step okay i think Correct. in the next session we can make it as a small document step by step first is sales order then uh, you know okay. so no worry so no yeah. worry we, as of now, we now we can move on now we can move on this one. Correct. Yes. We are okay. not focusing on this one. We are focusing only on the compliance management part. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Good. So one thing is clear now that SAP GTS will be standalone system. It's always recommended by even SAP to have it in in different net waiver system. So okay. that is the reason it is a standalone system. And we understood that we are transferring these information to SAP GTS. So one thing, please remember at high level, we'll discuss that when sales order gets a transfer to SAP GTS, it the we, we understood we will have replica of this document in GTS. We have mirror document in GTS, and that mirror document is called as a customs document. Or we can say more specifically, it is customs export document. The document which will be getting created by system that document is called as a customs document delivery will also be created as a customs document billing as i discuss explain you it is called as a customs export declaration similarly po will be created as an associated customs document the inbound delivery will be created as an associated customs document and material document will be created as a custom import declaration so
so this is the document even master data when it comes to master data when we transfer customer master and vendor master to gtf in gtf similar to so we have a concept of business partner vendor is a business partner so how if we are using s4 no issue in s4 bp even here also bp similarly when material gets a transfer to gts it is called as a customs product always we should never ever use the term material in gts we should use the term either customs product or only product so these are the some term which we need to use okay and we need to use we need to remember two transaction codes always in our ecc or s4 the transaction code is slash s a p s l l slash menu underscore legal and if it is in ecc we will be saying using it legal r3 and it is ecc or s4 in sap gts we have similar kind of transaction code that is slash sap slash menu underscore legal so these are the two transaction codes which we will be using frequently to complete our processes but actually you are saying r3 we are not going to use gts in ecc and all right then what is the use of legal r3 no no in so we will this is difference in transaction code in ecc or s4 it will be legal r3 in gts it is legal only okay both are same both are actually taking yeah. us to uh, uh -huh. so i mean actually. both is called as a gts area menu okay gts area menu in ecc even here also it is called uh, called as a gts area menu but master data and all you know we are actually making only in legal correct not in r3 huh? we are making master master data. Data. customer master data material vendor suppose you want to create mm -hmm. anything in gts then we have to use only legal not in r3 correct no 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 that is what we are mm -hmm. not creating any any data directly oh, in gts correct correct so okay okay, mm -hmm. okay. we are transferring data even customer master should also be transferred to uh, gt system okay okay so for creating for creating the master data everything in, uh, in, in okay okay you go ahead i will understand r3 yeah. and uh, Okay. So one thing, if GTS is standalone system, we are transferring this many information, then how do we transfer this kind of information? Definitely, we will have some kind of connection between both the systems. Yeah. If it is ECC and GTS, both the systems will be connected with each other. If it is GTS and S4, both the system will be connected with each other. Even in few, in few clients, we have multiple ECC system. I think you, you all know. We have many EC system, ECC one, ECC two. Example, I'm saying that is called as a ECC kernels. So let's say for one business, they are using one system. They have their own landscape system landscape. So for another business, they they are using another ECC system that can follow another ECC system servers. So whatever systems we are using, all the systems should be connected separately with SAP GTS system. And that connection is made by remote function call.